Again, from a local congregation from Partick Free Church of Scotland, continuing. And it's a pleasure and a privilege and a responsibility to come out in the open air and to bring to your attention uh, the claims of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a bit breezy today, that's why I'm standing here beside this equipment with my foot on the stand in the hope that uh, it will not be blown over. But we're glad to be here and we do extend a warm welcome to you to come to our normal diets of worship. We meet on the Lord's Day, Sunday at 11 a.m. and 6 and we meet on Wednesday at 7.30. Now you may have noticed that I called Sunday the Lord's Day. Why is it the Lord's Day? Well, it's the Lord's Day because that's the day when he arose. You know about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. You know he was crucified on, the, on Friday. He was taken down from the cross, dead. He was put into a, a borrowed tomb on Friday. He was there Friday night, all day Saturday, Saturday night. But something tremendous happened on the first day of the week, on Sunday. What happened? The Lord arose. And this is remarkable because the Jews who were no friends of the Lord Jesus, they asked that a, a Roman soldier be situated at the tomb to, to guard it. And Pilate gave permission for a soldier to be there. And he was there all the time. But the Lord came out. And the Bible tells us that there was a stone rolled over the tomb also. And the Lord came out while the, the stone was still at the entrance. And an angel came down and removed the stone in order that those who were going to visit the tomb very early on the Sunday morning would know that the tomb was empty and that Jesus was not there. Now you may well tell me, well, this is all very well, but what's that got to do with me? Well, the very fact that Jesus rose from the grave tells us that we're all going to rise from the grave one day. More than likely, unless the Lord returns, all of us will go the way of all the earth. We're all mortal. The wages of sin is death. That's why we have sin. That's why we have death, because of sin. And more than likely, we're all going to die. We're all going to go to the grave whether we're burnt or whether our bodies are deposited in a coffin and put in the ground, we're all going to return to dust. But one day, friends, we're all going to come alive again. Why? Because Jesus is alive. And he demonstrated once and for all that there is life after death. This is the great hope of the atheist. The atheist would like to tell us there is no God. And when we die, it's all over. It's curtains, they'll tell us. And what they'll tell us then is that we are to live our lives and enjoy it as much as possible, live it to the full, enjoy all that this world can give us, because when we die, it's all over. Well, Christ has debunked that. Christ died. He was taken down at the cross, dead, and he was buried. And on the third day, he arose. And because of this, we're all going to rise one day. There is life after death. And the great hope of the atheist will be exposed 
as a fraud. And therefore this is why we come out. We want to tell you about the good news. A death which is a great enemy and something that we fear because it's not natural. We describe it as natural, but it's not natural. It has become normal because of sin. But it was never God in, God's intention that we should die. For well, we have no need to fear death. Because Jesus Christ has conquered death. This is the gospel. It's concerning Jesus Christ, who has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And this is the great hope and the great desire of every human being. It is to live forever. It is to have eternal life. Well, eternal life is to be found in a person. The Lord Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That's the reason he has come. He has come, suffered and died in order to bring about eternal life. And the only way that we can achieve this eternal life, the only way that we can have it, is by believing upon him. It is by receiving him as our Lord and as our Savior. That's why it tells us in the book of Isaiah, in the Old Testament there, it still proclaimed the Christian gospel. In Isaiah, what did it say? Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. That's a reference to Christ. Look unto me, and be ye saved. This is our great need. We need to be saved, because by nature we are perishing. We have no hope in ourselves, because of sin. But the Bible tells us, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. We are to put our faith in him, upon Jesus Christ. The prophet Ezekiel said to God's people, who were in captivity at this time in Babylon, he says to God's people there, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? There the prophet is telling them that God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He does not delight in it. God is a God who seeks to save. God is a God who seeks to save. But you must turn from your wicked ways, the Bible says. What does that mean? That means repentance. Every one of us must know this. Why? Because we're sinners and we must repent. Jesus says, repent and believe the gospel. That's the, the essential call of the gospel. To repent and to believe. To turn away from our sins. To turn away from our lying. To turn away from our cheating. To turn away from our stealing. To turn away from our filthy mouths. To turn away from fornication. To turn away from adultery. To turn away from idolatry. To turn away from our sins. To leave them behind. To walk in a new direction. This is what's required of us in the gospel. And to believe upon the Lord Jesus. These are the terms. And the Lord Jesus will not negotiate. He will not compromise. He tells us what's required. In order to be saved, we are to repent. And we're to believe. That's what's required of us. And the Lord Jesus will receive us. He will not turn anyone away. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Lord Jesus said on one occasion, He that heareth my word, and believeth in him that hath sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In some way, in 
may be a very small way you are hearing the word of God today. I am reading, I am quoting from God's word to you today. And Jesus says, He that heareth my word and believeth in him that sent me hath everlasting life. You can receive everlasting life today. If you will believe God's word, if you will believe God, if you will believe in what he has done, and if you will repent and believe, then you can have everlasting life today. You know, there are some churches that will tell us that we cannot know that we have been saved. We cannot know that we have eternal life. And some will tell us that we have to go through a period of purgatory when we die in order to be made ready for glory. The Bible does not teach that at all. Indeed, the Bible teaches us that the moment that we believe upon the Lord Jesus, our sins are forgiven and we are reconciled to God. Paul says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what's offered in the gospel today. That's the well-meant offer of the gospel today to everyone. To the outcast, to the sinner, to the drug addict, to the drunkard, to the thief, to the robber, to the murderer, to the fornicator, to the adulterer. This is what's offered in the gospel. If we will but come to the Lord Jesus, all our sins will be forgiven. The slate shall be wiped clean, clear, we shall be reconciled to God. We will have peace with God. That's what is in the gospel. And you can know the hope of eternal life today. Foxes have holes. And the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Do you know that the Lord Jesus was homeless? He didn't have a home. He had no possessions. All that he had was the clothes that was on his back. Yet, friends, he was the one who turned the world upside down and is still turning the world upside down. And he's transforming lives. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Do you want a new start? Is your life a mess? Are you an outcast? Do you know you're not right with God? Do you know you have no peace with God? What's the problem? I can tell you what the problem is. Maybe you don't know what the root problem is. You only see the effects. But the problem is sin. That's the problem. It's a problem that every one of us has by nature. But in the Christian gospel, and indeed only in the Christian gospel, there is hope. There's an opportunity for a new beginning, new life, new power. It comes when you're born again by the Spirit of the living God. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, that's what it means to be a Christian, to be in Christ to have your life in Christ. He is a new creature. All things are passed away. The old sinful life is gone. It's buried. It's done. We're dead to sin. We lived unto righteousness now. Behold, all things are become new. This is what Christianity gives. It's a new life. It's not about rules. It's not about regulations. It is not about working our way to heaven. It's not trying to appease God. It's believing. That's what's required. It's not doing. It's believing. It's calling upon another to save you. You know, the Apostle Paul says this wonderful verse in the book of Romans. Therefore, or I should say, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. No condemnation. What a wonderful message, what a glorious gospel, what an all-powerful Savior who's able to save to the uttermost. No condemnation. Is it not true, friends, if, you, if you're honest with yourself, you don't need to openly admit it, but if you're honest with yourself, you know that you're under God's wrath and condemnation. You know it, you feel it. Your conscience is telling you there are times when it speaks more than others. There are times when you think about eternity. There are times when you think about you'll be going the way of all the earth and one day you'll meet God and these things trouble you. Maybe it's night time when you're trying to get to sleep or maybe when someone's suddenly taken from you or maybe it's when illness strikes you and your mortality is be becomes more aware to you. Then, then, your conscience is troubling you. You know you're not right with God. You don't know what you can do about it. You don't really know what's wrong. But you know you have a burden, you're carrying a burden. It is because you're under the wrath and condemnation of God. But in the gospel, friends, this wrath, this condemnation, this burden is removed. No wonder this message, we cannot keep it to ourselves. No wonder we come out. No wonder we go to the highways and the byways. No wonder we plead with people. We plead with our fellow humans that they might come and embrace the Lord Jesus Christ. As he himself did say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Are you heavy laden today? And I'm not talking about your shopping. Are you heavy laden? Yes, you have a burden. Oh, it's invisible. No one can see it, but you can feel it. The burden is sin. And you cannot throw it off. No matter what you might do, you cannot throw it off. But Jesus can take it. That's why he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you want rest? Do you want peace? Do you want felicity? Do you want to be right with God? Then come. To the Lord Jesus, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. What he's telling us to do is, cast off your burden, and take up another burden, a much lighter burden. What is that burden he, he wants you to take up? He wants you to take up the burden of following him. That's all. Follow him. Walk in his footsteps. Look unto him. Follow him. He will take you to glory. Salvation is found in none other, for there is none other name under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. That was the message that the apostles brought. And that message turned the world upside down. And that message is still turning lives upside down today. Lives are being transformed. Jesus Christ is in heaven. He sits upon the throne of the universe, but he is still transforming lives. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Do you want to know this new life? Then come to the Lord Jesus. Oh, minister, but he'll never accept me. Jesus is only looking for religious people. He's only looking for upright people. He'll never come. He'll never, he'll never accept me. No, no, no. No, no, no. The Lord Jesus will receive all who will come to him. He will not turn away. No, he won't. He will have you. 
you know he's more willing to receive you than you are to come to him come therefore avail yourselves of the salvation that he has secured remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days go not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them You know, we, we love a reaction, we love a reaction, you know, because it demonstrates that the Word of God is working, yeah, and what happens is God stirs up, up Satan stirs up opposition to the truth, but the truth can be vindicated, friends. You know the truth that I'm talking about. No? Oh, well, there you go now. Out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What's in his heart comes out of his mouth. What's in my heart comes out. And what's in my heart is that you might be saved. That you might know the Lord Jesus Christ. That you might come to him. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them you know you can laugh about the gospel you can make fun of the gospel preacher that's not that's not difficult he's easy to make fun of you can laugh you can put all these things to the back of your mind but you know friends you know it one day you're going to stand before God you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ he's going to be on his great white throne and all your laughing and all your jesting will all be over indeed the Bible tells us that day your tongue shall stick to the top of your mouth you shall be speechless that day and you will stand before Jesus Christ and all your laughing and all your rejecting will all be over and there it'll be you and Jesus Christ it won't it won't be you and a preacher it'll be you and Jesus Christ and he will tell you what your eternal destiny will be he will tell you where you will spend eternity you'll either be you'll either be on his right hand and you'll go into glory with him or you'll go on his left hand and he'll say to you depart from me ye cursed that's what he'll say one day this savior whom we are commending to you today and urging you and impressing upon you to receive him as your Lord and Savior that if you will continue to rebel and resist and reject him and if that will continue then that day he will be your judge and he will be your destroyer it's awesome we're talking about eternity eternity where will you spend eternity you can laugh at the minister you can laugh at those handing out tracts you can ridicule the gospel you can reject the Lord Jesus but one day one day friends you'll cry out that you had Christ one day you wish you listened when will that day be I don't know I know it'll come are you ready are you prepared the only way to be prepared is to have him as Lord and Savior we're going to draw our time to a close it's been good to be with you this afternoon it's been a real privilege and pleasure and responsibility to confront people with eternal realities but this is what it's all about 
Life is so short. It's brief. It's so uncertain. We're here today and we're gone tomorrow. And when we go, it's into eternity. And there's no second opportunity in eternity. There's no one preaching the gospel to you in eternity. In eternity, you will be in heaven forever or you will be in hell forever. Think of that. Forever and ever and ever. No change. Those in heaven obviously wouldn't want to change. But those in hell, their conscience will condemn them because they wasted gospel opportunities. May the Lord bless his word to you this afternoon and may he give you grace to come and to embrace him whom we freely offer in the gospel to you this afternoon.